the question is, with your piece of legislation about banning uh, women from using, yes. uh, my question to you is, and it doesn't go far enough. You, I'll be filing more bills. You have said that it was created in response to Congresswoman elect McBride. Absolutely, 100 percent. And it, but should it, legislation be created targeted at one specific it, person? It doesn't, it doesn't mention anyone in the legislation, but, but I'm you've not said going, it was aimed not, at her. No, I have said it's a result of this. I'm not going to allow biological men into women's private spaces. Congresswoman Nancy Mace is facing death threats from critics after introducing a bill in Congress that would require everyone on Capitol Hill to use bathrooms matching their biological sex. This controversial move has sparked outrage from certain groups. Let's check out what's happening. I will stand in the brink and stand in the way of anyone on the radical left who thinks that it's okay for a penis to be in a women's locker room or a bathroom or a changing room. Hell no. Spe I'm not going to stand for it. And the speaker said it would be in the House Rules Package. If it's not, I'll be ready with a motion, uh, a privileged motion to force a vote on this. This is not okay. I'm a survivor of rape. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse. And I'm not going to allow any man in any female private space. Now, speaker End of story. And by the way, I'm getting death threats from men pretending to be women. Why is it that these crazy people, the insanity, the radical left, are willing to kill women over over a man's right to be in a women's restroom? Speaker it's Johnson crazy. has said, Speaker Johnson has said he wants to treat every new member with the words dignity and respect. Well, he, well, Forcing this re congressperson to go into a male restroom, is that here? dignity and respect? Forcing women to share private spaces with men is not dignity and not respect. And I'm absolutely going to stand in the way of anyone who thinks it's okay for a man to be in our locker room, in our changing rooms, in our dressing rooms, in women's bathrooms. And in fact, if you agree with that, you're crazy. Let's take a moment to hear what Johnson actually said. Everybody, um, I just want to make a statement for all of you here and be very clear. I was asked a question this morning at the leadership gaggle, and I rejected the premise because the answer is, is so obvious. For anybody who doesn't know my well-established record on, on this issue, let me be unequivocally clear. Uh, a man is a man, and a woman is a woman, and a man cannot become a woman. That said, I also believe, um, that's what Scripture teaches, what I just said, uh, but I also believe that we treat everybody with dignity. And so uh, we can do and believe all those things at the same time. And I wanted to make that clear for everybody because there's lots of questions. But that's where I stand. I've stood there my whole life, and those are facts. Here's my take on what Nancy Mace and Speaker Mike Johnson said. And honestly, I think that they both make valid and necessary points. Nancy Mace is right to stand firm on protecting women's privacy and safety in spaces like bathrooms, locker rooms, and changing areas. Her argument is not just about policy. It's rooted in her personal experiences as a survivor of sexual abuse. That brings a powerful emotional perspective to her stance. She's drawing a line and making it clear that these private spaces are meant to protect women and allowing men into them undermines that protection. Speaker Mike Johnson backs this up with a more philosophical and moral approach. He's straightforward about his belief that men and women are biologically distinct and that a man cannot become a woman. This aligns with his personal and religious convictions but he also emphasizes the importance of treating everyone with dignity. That's an important point. Standing firm on core values doesn't mean we have to lose respect for others. Both Mace and Johnson are addressing a critical issue here. They're arguing for boundaries that protect women while recognizing that society needs to maintain some level of compassion and decency in these discussions. It's about striking a balance that ensures privacy and safety without abandoning the principle of dignity for all. I think they're absolutely right to take a strong stance on this. Women's safety should never be compromised, and it's essential that policies reflect that. At the same time, they're demonstrating that you can hold firm beliefs while still advocating for respect in how we handle sensitive issues. It's a tough conversation, but one worth having if we're going to create policies that truly work for everyone.